I was asked to do something about the landscape but also looking at the geology in particular of the landscape and what can we do where art works with geology and tells a story about the landscape. With all the artworks that I do in a landscape, it's all about location. It has to be right, because we're turning the landscape into art, effectively. It's how it works with the light and making sure the light works in the right place, somewhere where it's accessible for the public and they can see it. And that's what, what Bales Hush did. It kind of you know, fulfilled all those criteria, so it was really important. Um, we got that bit right. But in terms of the, the greater scheme of why it's important in this location is because this is where I live. You know the people, you know the history, you know all those little details because it's, you know, it's, it's where you are. It's another dimension that I can bring to it which I wouldn't be able to bring to an artwork anywhere else. Textiles are great because you can do really large things with them for a lot less money than you can do with steel and concrete or whatever. It's that contradiction as well when you've got a wild and unstable and a rough environment and you've got something as delicate as textile and you're doing something with a, with a material which is completely unsuited to the environment. It's not what you'd build things out of and it's just that kind of, that balance of being able to do something which is actually, on one hand, seems to be really delicate in something which is far from delicate, it's rugged and robust. I'm increasingly more aware of, of how conscious you have to be of the environment. I, I usually recycle everything that, that happens at the end of a project and that came down to the use of materials and simplifying that use of materials. All the hardware, so all the ground anchors, fixings, shackles, all the things which are all the metal work basically is all reusable. And then all the textile stuff is all the same material. So that when it goes for recycling, you don't have to separate everything. So it's just about finding the right materials and understanding the recycling process. My name is Peter Jackson, I represent the Nented Mines Conservation Society and I work with the North Pennines A and B Partnership as part of the Geology Advisory Group. The rocks here in Teesdale are from the Carboniferous period. They're like a sandwich cake and they alternate repetitively across the dale. One of the ways of finding out whether there are any minerals in the particular area that we're interested in is by a process known as hushing. And the hush is the end result of that process where the miner has washed away all the surface rocks. Sometimes they would keep on doing that for several years, so the hush would get bigger and bigger. So it starts off being a little trench, dug by picks and shovels, and ends up being a very large feature in the landscape, big enough to walk in, big enough to drive up in some places. Mining history is so important to Teesdale uh, that it, it really cannot be uh, underestimated. The earliest record that we know of is, uh, is about 1525, which would be Henry VIII, when Henry VIII leased the Teesdale mines to one of his, uh, his earls, the Earl of Southampton. And since that time, the Crown has leased the mines all the way through the 16th century, the 17th century, uh, and into the 18th century. Well, lead mining was probably, the, uh, apart from agriculture, it would be the only, uh, the only industry. So lead was, uh, was quite an important uh, part of the local economy. I 
art in rural areas is, is important and it is so radically different from art in, in an urban environment. The culture is different, so you can't expect art that works in the city to work in a rural environment and vice versa. And playing with that and not having a fixed idea of what it is. And I think that some people have a very fixed and conservative idea about what art in a rural area should be or what they think is the art that comes from a rural area. But I think it's more complicated than that. Because you can do stuff here that you can't do in a city. Um, one of the things being scale, obviously. So with this piece being in a protected landscape, you've really got to be as robust as you can just to be responsible. And yet, you can still do something like this, if you do it right. It was about the use of materials, it was about all the fixings, how often we went on site, the time of year that we were doing it. Nothing was decided without thinking about the impact on the environment and the ecology of the area. The grassland around us here, below the hush, is really important for a whole range of ground nesting birds, in particular waders. So we've got birds like curlew, which are Europe's largest wading bird with a really long curved beak, with a wonderful haunting bubbling call um, during the spring. And we also have birds like lapwing, which have a wonderful uh, tumbling display flight in the spring. And they like nesting on quite short vegetation. And in places like this, where we have mixtures of vegetation lengths and nice damp soil for the birds to feed from, it's absolutely ideal for them. And this is why this is such an important area for breeding wading birds. We can safely say that it's, it's one of the largest artworks in the UK, and I think that's a safe bet. Artwork on that kind of scale just doesn't happen very often anywhere in the world, and there's not many people that are kind of working in that kind of environment, and I'm interested in, in scale and what scale does. When you're in a piece that, that large, the idea of the scale has that emotional response as well when you're consumed within it, and that's also why it's good to kind of be able to do something like that. The colour is there because it stands out against the green, it stands out against the blue of the sky. Most of the time you're looking up, whether you're at the bottom of the field or whether you're underneath it, a lot of it is looking up, so you're, you're contrasting with the sky. But also the, it was looking at the different textiles and, and it's not just about finding something the right colour, but also how that textile, when it moves, what does that do with the colour and the light as well? So that was part of choosing the fabric is because that particular textile does the things that it does. Well, the AOMB partnership initiated the Hush project and we went to um, Steve Messam and talked with Steve about how he might be able to create a piece of work that got people to think differently about the landscape and to focus on some of our lead mining heritage in particular and Hush has been a fantastic success. It's got people coming out to the North Pennines. Over 5,000 people went up and interacted with it. It's been uh, in the media all over the world. And it's had a really positive impact on the economy of Teesdale. But more importantly, it's got people thinking about this little known aspect of our area's geological and mining heritage. This is a big project and projects like this don't just spring up overnight. There's been a lot of discussion with Arabia State, who own the land, with the local farmer, a lot of engagement with uh, volunteers who've helped to make this possible, and a lot of input from our own staff. And we're very grateful to uh, our funders and supporters for helping us make this happen. People are enjoying it. The people that go up there are clearly enjoying it. It's a UNESCO geopark. UNESCO is, is a global network of, of landscapes which are protected about their, their, their geology. It's an international thing, so it's important to do something which reaches out internationally. The whole idea of, of pushing what can be done and, 
different ways of approaching how art works with this landscape and, or anything else works with this landscape to help tell the, the stories. And if it's kind of opened that door a little bit, and I think that's hopefully going to be the, the legacy in it, it's that other th it would allow other things which would never have even been thought of before to at least have been contemplated and happened. Mm -hmm.